Welcome to Because You Asked, I'm Barry Newspot. We are in Jerusalem live with Jane Keel, the so-called Jerusalem Jane, and she's got an incredibly interesting story to tell us. Welcome, Jane. Welcome to Jerusalem. Thank you, I appreciate it. So you were just telling me, uh, you're this Danish lady who gets a message, go to Israel, and you've been here ever since. Tell us briefly your story. Well, I was born and raised uh, in a Christian family in Denmark. I uh, grew up knowing what the Bible is saying about Israel, but when you saw the media, when you watch the media today, it's so anti-Israel, it's so negative. So I started coming here as a tourist, you know, like everybody else, but tourist group. And if you really believe in the Bible, Israel is your home. I mean, I connected to this nation in a way I can't explain. And uh, while I lived in Denmark, I actually traveled six hours by train to Copenhagen because Jensi Arafat, the terrorist, was invited to the Danish parliament, red carpet out, welcomed as a head of state. So my mom and I, two little Danish ladies, traveled six hours by train, went to the Danish parliament, stood with the big Israeli flag to welcome Jensi Arafat, to show him that someone is standing with Israel. And long story short, that, that experience changed me because when Yassi Arafat came, the whole atmosphere shifted. The whole, it started pouring down, the whole atmosphere became so evil. I can't explain it. And I was just like, something is going on. It's like it's a battle against darkness and light, evil and good, when it comes to Israel. And on one of the trips here, I really felt God said, you know, one day I will bring you back to Israel. 2010, I packed up, I was at a place in my life where I was really praying, saying, what's next? And after God had said, one day I'll bring you back, I said, that's it, here we go. You just showed up? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, people actually, what? What are you going to do in Israel? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, but I know God said go. And I think you're incredible, and I think you're doing amazing work, and I Thank think, you. you know, God has a destiny for you, for me and for everybody watching. And I felt God said, go to Israel. So 2011, Abu Mazen, who is now the leader of the Palestinians, decided, forget about peace negotiations. I don't want to, he, does, he has not done anything for peace. Let's go to the United Nations and say we want Palestine recognized as a state. So I made a page on Facebook, Israel One Nation. In the beginning I kept it anonymous, but not for long, because I live here. I live amongst the Jewish people. I eat here, I sleep here, I hear the smells and the sound, you know, everything. And I was connecting with the Jewish people. And I was like, someone has to tell the world what's going on in Israel. You don't hear it in mainstream media. So much is going on. So I started sharing on my page because I lived here. And that page has exploded now to 137,000 followers around the world. Just me on a little page all by myself, trying to be a voice for Israel in the media that is so anti-Israel. Got it. You have a, a, a story um, that something happened to you on the Temple Mount, oh, the place yeah. in, just a, a few hundred yards from where we're sitting right yes. now, where the Jewish temple stood. Yeah. What happened to you? Well, I went. I didn't know much about the Temple Mount. I don't think a lot of people do. I started looking into what is it about this Temple Mount. So I got to go see for myself. And at that time, a couple of years ago, they, the Arabs hired children and women. They pushed them to Jerusalem, and they paid them to go in the Temple Mount to harass the Jews, to curse them, to scream at them, to spit at them. And throw rocks. Oh my gosh, so I started making videos of this. I got one of those little phones, and I started sharing that to the world, and I said, this is disgusting. Look at the hate towards the Jews who just want to go on the holy ground. And pray. Exactly. So I started sharing these videos. So the Mufti, the, or the Wacht, the Jordanian guard on the Temple Mount, started paying attention. So uh, they started kicking me off the Temple Mount. Uh, one time, one of the guards simply just took my phone out of my hands went through all my photos, my videos of horrible harassment that day. And he said, who are you working for? And uh, are you a journalist? And he just deleted the whole thing, which of course he is not entitled to. And uh, one day I received in my inbox on my Facebook, four photos of me taken the day before, how they have followed me on the Damascus Gate and the Temple Mount. And they said, Jane Keel, we know who you are and what you're doing. Leave our acts in peace which is pretty much saying, you are marked. You know, if they wanted to rape me, kill me, whatever, they could have done that, they were giving. And all my friends, uh, including Daniel and everybody, you know, like, I go to the police, this is serious. And did you? 
I did, and uh, they were kind of like, someone threatening you online, we can't really find them, because I get it, I'm not important enough, but I went back to the Temple Mount, they kept kicking, keep kicking me off, and then one of my good friends, Tom Trento, came with his team, who went to the Temple Mount, and then I decided to do something, because I have seen Hamas flag, Hezbollah flag, PLO flag on the Temple Mount, screaming death to the Jews, if they can do that, I can sing the blessing of Israel. So we made a video where I was singing Sma Israel on the Temple Mount, and I said, I can do that. I'm standing on holy ground, on the holy space of the Jewish people, I can bless them. And they just, the Arab world went crazy, and that video was shared on al Quds an Arab news site. Articles were written about me saying I'm a Jewish spy, I tried to storm the mosque, and uh, many, many horrible death threats online, you know, cut her throat, we're gonna find her, and... So they tried to intimidate me, but I kept going back and the last time I was on the Temple Mount I was kicked off again. They are coming. Okay, here comes the raft. So I'm just gonna keep walking. And um, so... Hello? Sorry, you need to go out here. I'm going now. Okay, please. Yes, I'm going. This way. You know my name? I know your name, for sure I know your name. Why do you know my name? Stop recording live. Can you can you tell me what to do? Okay, I want to tell you just to go outside. Praying here not allowed for non-Muslims. And not making an, a live interview and talking about something else, not allowed. Follow me. And that was actually when they had killed a couple of police officers and the Israeli government said we're gonna put up metal detectors. I have to go through metal detectors. Jewish people have why is the Arabs the only one who doesn't have to go through metal? It's insane. But you know, they made riot. So I went back because the box was not there. And I live streamed and I said, listen, it's so quiet. This is, this is a holy place. This is a place of worship. This is the way it's supposed to be. There's no Muslims. And that was picked up by Hamas. And Hamas shared my video, some of my video, another news, Arab news site shared it. And then whole mess started again with the death threats people calling me from all over the world, they were scared to death because, I mean, these are some pretty outrageous... People are saying, are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid because then I can't do what I'm doing, you know? And with all the hate and the propaganda and the lies coming against the Jews and occupation and, and all of this apartheid state, that is, that is lies born in the pit of hell. We know that. It was never a Palestinian state. Someone has to tell the truth. And I feel privileged and honored to do that every day. Well, you're, you're a great lady. Thank you. <laughs> so, talk to me about the Christian support uh, for Israel here and around the world, and the people that you're connected to, yeah. your followers and supporters. The funny thing about Israel One Nation is, um, I have thousands of Jewish people following it, saying, we love you, Fadi, you're, you're telling the truth. And then the whole Christian world saying, you know what, Jane? We don't know what happened in Brazil or America, wherever they live. You have become our eyes and ears in Israel, if I want to know what's going on. And I, one of the things that I'm trying to do also is to say to the Christian, come on for crying out loud, wake up, wake up. When you go to church on Sunday and you, you worship and you praise and you go home and you're in your little Jesus bubble, you gotta wake up and stand with Israel. We would have nothing if it wasn't for this nation. When you, every time you open the Bible, where's it taking place? In Israel, the Jewish people are being hunted, persecuted, and killed just for being the God's chosen people. We are crafted in. The whole world hates Israel. If we as Christians don't wake up and realize we need to stand with Israel, who will stand with Israel? So I want to say there are hundreds and millions of wonderful Christians around the world who gets it. Then there are Christians who absolutely don't get it and who is on the whole pro-Palestinian wave, which makes them not Christians in my eyes. So when you come here also, don't just run around to the Christian sites. Connect with the Jews, you know. Meet the soldiers, encourage the soldiers and say, you know what, you're doing a great job. Go to Judea and Samaria, but you need to love the people who are living here. Beautiful. Thank you for that. How's the Jewish support for what you're doing? Oh, they love me. Uh, walking down the streets now, it's uh, Jerusalem, Jane. <laughs> it's really, and I'm still saying, you know what? I'm nobody. I really, I'm a small town Danish girl that is doing nothing but just telling the truth. But unfortunately, we're living in a world where the lie has become the truth today. Not a lot of people are telling the truth. 
So I still meet Jewish people today saying, but we are all alone, we don't have any friends, and why would they think they have? If you look at the United Nations, UNESCO, United Nations, European Union, oh, you're occupying, you're building, la la la. So a lot of Jews who don't know Christians around the world honestly feel we are all alone. So when all of a sudden some blonde Danish girl is saying, you know what, you're not alone, and that this is your land, you are entitled to this land, and Israel deserves it. So, so going forward, uh, our mutual friend is going to be here with uh, Tom Trento, yes. with um, uh, Judge Janine from Fox News, and you're going to be involved in that trip. Uh, Give me a couple highlights. What's the big deal about this? The thing is that this is a trip where you're being educated, where you go to the hot spots, where you meet the people who knows what they're talking about. It's a security trip, you know, where you go around and you see this is what the Jewish people are facing. It's a very unique trip where you, if you want more than just to run around in Israel and get a suntan, this is the place where you get information, where you get knowledge. It's, it's, it's really one of a kind, and we judge Janine a firecracker. No, there's no one like her. <laughs> so I'm just people, you know, if you want to come to Israel, this is the trip. So tell, tell our audience how they can get in touch and follow you and get your daily information. Where yes. do they go? You know what? When I moved to Israel, my mom was not on Facebook, and I have a sister in America, so my mom was like, I gotta get on Facebook. So if my mom is on Facebook, everybody's gotta be on Facebook. So I made my place on Israel called Israel One Nation because it's not a two-state solution. It will never, hopefully, God forbid, be a two-state solution. So Israel One Nation. And uh, I have a webpage, JerusalemJane.com, very simple, where people can uh, read my story a little bit more about, you know, who am I, what brought me here, and what am I doing. Jane Kiel, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us on Because You Asked. You can always write to me at barry at americantruthproject.org or go to our website where you can always sign up and you'll never miss an important episode. Remember, it's always free. I'm Barry Newsbaum.